That is great news for everyone. Indeed it has. We should go outside for once. <laughs> Always in this room. Uh-oh. This is the episode about offensive power. Oh, oh, oh! Almost kissed again. <laughs> One of these days. Duty and responsibility. Cornerstones of a good relationship. Do not go to Kaguya for <laughs> relationship advice, please. Kaguya wants to do it properly. I like how all these titles are basically set up for that's what she said. I'm sure it's immensely important. Ooh, that's a tough one. Truth. Not truth. <laughs> Family legacy is at stake here. Oh, he did Kamadon. Is it the same guy? Oh, it's the same guy. <laughs> this is that relationship. Oh, you're not even really together then. I remember my first middle school relationship. <laughs> uh, high school relationship too, to be fair. I once dated a girl for six months and saw her twice. I feel like that's actually probably a common story. The dangers of Kabedon, I guess. I think that was my reaction to the idea of confessions in the very first episode. I mean, I can imagine confessions going really well and that leading to a great relationship, but I feel like in most cases, if it's not happening organically, it's probably just not going to happen. A confession is sort of a burden in a way. It's like, help me deal with these things I don't know how to process. It puts a lot of ask on the other person without a lot of give, if that makes sense. Like, what are you offering? Obsession is not necessarily something people want. You want to feel like people you are obsessed with are obsessed with you, but obsession by itself is not necessarily a positive. In fact, I feel like a lot of times it's a negative. When you think about it, a confession is kind of a plea to put you out of your misery. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, please help me with this one way or the other. I mean, crush me if you have to, but just free me from this curse that I can't handle on my own. Eventually, Kaguya and Miyuki will confess to each other, but they're also developing a relationship organically. They know each other. This is, I mean, generally solid advice. Not necessarily related to being in a relationship with him, though. And thoughts of Miyuki arise. Organically. Not from someone you like. <laughs> Nothing is bad from someone you like. Then you feel terrified trying to get out and you realize it's too late. There's a panic point in that trajectory that actually makes things deeper. Oh, the love detective is here. She wore her hat and everything. <laughs> oh, she really... Okay, she's public with this information. With this title. And this hat. <laughs> you don't have to decide one, one way or the other. You could start by just being honest. I mean, I feel like that solves a lot of problems. Ooh, that's a good test, actually. Chica, man, she knows her stuff. <laughs> she goes the <to> thread. <laughs> I mean, they are in close proximity a lot. That's a lock. You like him. It's over. We can wrap this up. <laughs> no, she solved that case in like five seconds. Oh, no, she's getting shut out. Chica is free. <laughs> I like how this is a psychological study, this whole show. Yeah, that's a real thing. For sure. There's a bunch of things I would put in the same category, like a common enemy, a near-death experience, a shared secret is a really big one, shared embarrassment that turns into a joke, all those things are glue. Anything that's mutual but private to the rest of the world. That's trust right there. It can be the whole world. The whole world is against you. The principle? The school's rules? Society. The whole world. The perennial wealth gap. <laughs> Think big. It's a little bit too big though, because I mean, you could have that with anyone. It should be a little bit more specific. <laughs> Let's see where this goes. You never know. Could be great. Can I also just say I really appreciate both of them for not immediately going to just break up? Because that seems to be the default for everyone, and it's really annoying. As if you're talking about a household appliance that no longer works. Like, oh, my vacuum cleaner's having problems. Throw it out. Human beings are not vacuum cleaners. Oh, but this is actually great if they're working together. <laughs> this is not anarchy at all. Chica just made the world a better place. I like how they're there to like witness the fruits of their conversation too. Miyuki plays a hand in this as well. Devil feathers. Nine times out of ten, this guy doesn't give a crap about charity. <laughs> He's just trying to impress the girl. <laughs> I mean, he's a sol solid dude. Again, we live in opposite world. Who's that lurking girl? Shirogana Miyuki wants to show off. That's what she said. How did you manage that? <laughs> I feel like that's way harder to do than anything else you could have done. 
She's always in the right place at the right time. This girl with quote unquote low IQ. It's a lot of pressure to be fair. <laughs> this guy has a lot of weight on his shoulders for a kid. Watch her being ace at this too. <laughs> yes. Please. Salad. <laughs> if we're aiming for average, I mean. She's a genius. I just know she's a genius. She's secretly the mastermind behind everything. She sees all. She can do all. But she chooses not to take the lead. Again, how did you manage? Okay. And fetal position. <laughs> Maybe you could aim for your face and then you might hit the ball. He closed his eyes. And she fixes another problem in the span of a few seconds. Oh, or not. Oh yeah, he closed his eyes again, that's right. That's a good look. <laughs> I will say though that that kind of visualization in sports is really, really useful. Okay, Deku. <laughs> if you can't hit a volleyball, can you even call yourself a hero? That was amazing. That was above average one week later. Yeah, I hope this pays dividends. This paid off way, way more than I thought it would. <laughs> She's wrecked. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. That's an actual victory, for sure. Okay, this text goes by way too fast, always. Can we make the subchapters three for three of her helping people at school this episode? We solved two problems already. Kaguya wants to share an umbrella. That's what she she said. Oh, another big day. This is a, a big chance, Miyuki. Umbrella sharing. My girlfriend and I just watched Kataro Lives Alone. This reminds me of that. The protocol is you gotta allow your shoulder to get a little bit wet. That means your umbrella etiquette is A+, and you care about the other person. I remember the time where this would have been the sweetest juice of life. <laughs> I kind of missed that. You this consciously? That is very future thinking, future oriented. Successfully marked. <laughs> Yuki's not the only one planning. At least one of you brought an umbrella, right? Did they both forget their umbrellas? Whoops. <laughs> that is so delicious. Uh, whoops. <laughs> Give her your jacket or something. Oh, actually happened, though. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you play that off. Like, oh, actually, I do have one. <laughs> Only really conspiring minds would think that of other people. So yeah, she would think that, actually. I do think there's a correlation between the way people act themselves and the way they interpret the actions of others. Often, it's the people who are the least trustworthy that are the least willing to trust others. The most conniving people are the most suspicious, although that causal link is more clear in one direction than the other. Like, someone who is conniving will probably be extra suspicious of others, but someone being suspicious could mean that they're conniving. It could also just mean that they've been really hurt. This is what you wanted. This is really the goal. It was weak. It's also amazing he made this plan, even knowing that. Oh! Checkmate. Oh, that was good. <laughs> It would all be saved by him just coming clean right now and pulling out the umbrella and saying, you're right, I wanted to be under the umbrella with you. Boom. Do it confidently. Actually, she's given him an opportunity to save face. 
I was gonna say, it's amazing that he made this plan, and just in the off chance of the one day she... Oh no, <laughs> she did that too. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh no! Oh well, if she has an extra one, they can both use it. And Chika goes three for three in this episode of solving everyone's problems. Read between the lines, the huge, huge gaps between the lines. His shoulder's gonna be so wet. His left shoulder. <laughs> I remember, I remember this time in life. I remember when things were this precious. Yeah, there you go. That's some accurate tallying there, finally. I will say that, thankfully, even though I thought the ceiling was sort of gone forever at a certain point, I still do experience that same sweetness. I know, and I'm quite relieved by the fact that I can still experience really extreme depths of excitement and romance and interest in someone and just the, the heights of that feeling when you're really into someone and things are going well. But I feel like what it is has changed shape, like it's not sharing an umbrella. <laughs> More like I'll make you take the first step through manipulation and lies and scheming. And end credit scene of who knows what. Here comes a new challenger. It's Minato from Persona 3. <laughs> it's sort of perfect how this show is so heavily focused on Kaguya and Miyuki and their love, but really the, the bright and shining star for me, especially in this episode, is Chika, who is just silently running things. There's something Shigure-esque about her. <laughs> Perhaps in the end we'll find out this is all planned for her to obtain God's sweetness.